Hello YouTube, welcome back to the life of a virtual airline pilot. I'm your host, as always, Captain Mac, and today we're going to continue our exciting journey uh, in our Dash 8 Q400. Been a good time so far. I want to stick with it a little bit longer. Some of you may be thinking, oh, I'm getting a little tired of this thing, but i got to tell you, the longer I fly it, the more I'm enjoying it, so I want to spend a little bit more time in this aircraft, and the flight that we're going to be doing today is to an airport that I haven't ever flown to in FSX, so I want to take advantage of that as well. I recently put up a... Um, sort of a basic flight tutorial for the Field Air E-Jets and sort of kind of got to enjoy those a little bit too. So we might be doing some flights here pretty soon in some Embraer's, uh, some of Embraer's regional jets. But until then, let's go ahead and continue with the plan of action. Let's go down here to all bids because obviously we're not doing this mission right now. Uh, so we're going to have to hop down here and do our thing. We are flying to uh, Prescott. Arizona today. KPRC is going to be uh, QXE306. Take a real quick glance at things over here. Obviously, the information is pretty straightforward. Uh, departure time 0310. This is Zulu, of course, arriving at 0445, which makes it a total flight time of, was that, 1 hour 35 minutes? Give or take a little bit. 300 miles, pretty good to go. We're going to get our weather from Active Sky 2012. As always, we got our flight plan from PFPX. Don't need their charts because I know how to find my own most of the time. So that's it. That's all. No more. Let's hop on into the simulator and let's get this thing rolling as quick as we can. All right, a real quick look at our A cars then. Uh, I've already set up the flight. I don't want to take a lot of time doing this. I just grabbed a previous route, click on that, pick whichever one once they pop up, hit the check mark, and you're good. Oh, looks like I need to do it again since I popped that up. Oops. Uh, it doesn't matter which one, I'm just picking one that's not the route we have to follow. Just remember that's for this flight map here. Go to Setup Flight, and uh, let's see, there's the flight plan in there. We're going to take this all the way up to its max cruising altitude of flight level 250 today, so we're good on that. Now when I hit the Start Flight button, it's not going to work. Uh, this is same thing, just a difference in the titling of the model, not a problem, but it's going to tell me it's started. I, I've been leaving that on just to show you guys, so let me move this over here. Highlight this, Control shift f one there we go. Bring this back, and now it's going to start. Same thing, titling issue. Bam, we're good to go. So, for whatever reason, uh, even though I started in a cold and dark state, a car sinks the aircraft running. It's something to do with the Majestic Dash 8. So, just remember Control Shift F1 before you try to hit Start Flight, and you're good to go. So, we're good with that. A cars is done. We are in a different uh, livery again today, and you can't really see it because, well, it's a dark out. And I think this is our first official full night flight. Uh, we've flown from daytime into night, I think, once, but we're actually going to be completely night flight all the way through this one, so it's going to be a pretty good time. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'm hoping that our departure out of Prescott will be a daytime departure just because I want to see what the area looks like in the sim. Like I said, I've never flown into that airport. But in the meantime, just a real quick look as best we can. Here is your, uh, what is that, Michigan, I think? Let's jump up here and see if we can see. No, it's Montana. Here's your uh, Horizon Air Montana repaint for the Q400. Very well done repaint. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Good times. All right. So there she is, as best you can see her. Um, Flight Sim always puts this thing forward of the line. I have no idea why it does that. It actually drives me bonkers that it does that. But uh, normally I'd push it back. But when you do that with the Q400, it initiates a pushback procedure that's built into the aircraft, and it's just a pain in the butt. So we're not going to mess with that. What do you say we hop on in the aircraft and get this show on the road? All right, so I just wanted to squeeze this in at the beginning here real quick. I'm still actually in the process of doing the captain's originating checks and the first officer's originating checks or flows. But I wanted to show you uh, one more time how to set up the V speeds in this aircraft. And you need the uh, speed card for the Q400 which uh, is in the documents section and all that stuff when you purchase the Majestic uh, Dash 8 and in this case uh, we need the metric Q card because we've got everything on this aircraft set as metric now I need my takeoff mass which I get from my control panel I've shown that to you before as well so I've got my takeoff mass which is uh, 26,000 and change uh, 26,000 kilograms and change so when I look at my speed card it goes from 26 to 28,000 kilograms 
All right, so I have to uh, correlate between the two, and uh, basically I'm just gonna I'm gonna take the difference. So um, our outside air temperature we can see right here is uh, plus 13 degrees Celsius. You may or may not. Let me pop that up for you. Plus 13 degrees Celsius. So we're using the first section of the chart for a flaps five. Uh, v rotate in V2, which is at or below 20 degrees Celsius, and we're using the altitude of zero because we're almost at sea level where we're at right now. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. If you don't understand everything I just said there, let me know down in the comments, and I'll do it again in a future video uh, for the Q400, and I'll make sure to show you the card again. But I have shown you the card before, and I believe it's in the cold and dark startup tutorial. So using that basic information, uh, v, V1 and V rotate are going to be the same. So V1 and V rotate for our aircraft is going to be 100 and let's see, it's 124 or 130. So I have to go between those, it's a difference of six. So it's going to be 127 and 130. Uh, 130 is V2. So V1 and V rotate, we hit the little select button way over here. It highlights those. There's V1. We're going to rotate that. Nope, wrong button. That was, that was the barometric pressure. It's kind of kind of dark out. Uh, so we need 127. There's 127. I'll pop that up so that you can see it there. 127 V rotate is going to be the same. So I highlight uh, to highlight V rotate. I just click the select button again, and then I rotate that one up to 127. Come on up, 127, and then hit it one more time, and that's going to give me V2, which we said was going to be 130. So we'll rotate that on up to 130. Keep coming up. There's 130 right there. Hit it again, and this is going to be for our um, our V fry and our climb speed. And I had to move my chart a little bit over there, and that's why I, I jumped off there for a second. So my V fry speed for flaps five. Again, uh, the difference between the two is uh, looks like it's five five knots between the two. So I'm going to go with 140 as my V fry for uh, flaps five. And my V climb is going to be 150. So go up to 140. This is our flap retraction initiation speed. And then 150 is our initial climb speed. Come on up to 150. And there you have it. That's how you set your V speeds. Make sure that you pull the appropriate. Uh, uh, speed card, whether it's metric or imperial, depending on what you're using. I'm using metric right now. Pull the proper speed card. Make sure that you have your uh, takeoff weight. You know what your temperature is and your altitude is, and then there you go. It's pretty simple to do that. So that's how we set our V speeds. I'm going to finish doing these uh, originating checks, and then uh, you'll see me back here in just a second. We'll start uh, getting this flight kicked off. All right, now that we have our little reminder on how to set our V speed, let's go ahead and jump right on into setting up uh, the FMS, FMC, CDU, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're going to be doing next. So let's hop down here. <clears throat> and let's see, where do we get started here? We want to start with our flight plan. Click on that. We're departing from KLAX. Enter. Enter one more time. And we're good to go. Now we could we could put in KPRC right now if we want, or we can just roll right into the flight plan. I'm gonna roll right into the flight plan. I'm gonna say where are we at? I wanna click on KLAX. Uh, no, wait, think, think, think. My brain's not working. I wanna click on KLAX, then click menu, and then we wanna click on depart. There we go, now we're working. We're gonna be taking runway 25 right today, so that's number eight down here. Click on number eight, hit enter. And we're taking the Holtz 9 departure. We'll be briefing that here in a little bit. So number 4, enter. And it is runway 25 right, so we'll click on that again. Enter. And then our transition is out at thermal. It didn't didn't give us that option in here. So well, that's all right. Click on flight plan again. <coughs> and there you go. It's got all the information in for that. Docker, Wheeler, Shafe. Uh, PV. It's not showing Shafe twice. See, it's number Shafe is number five. It just shows you the last waypoint from the previous page, which I actually like that. So we're good to go there. And then all the way out to Holtz, and then from Holtz we're going to Thermal, which is TRM. There's a couple different ways of doing that. We can select this spot here, click on List. Thermal's a VOR, 
And it's not on the first page. There's 37 pages. I'm going to go through a couple and see if it pops up, but it probably won't because there's so many VORs in the area. So you could go through here and find it. Oh, there it is, thermal, TRM number 31. So we can select number 31, enter. Vice versa, if we didn't want to mess with trying to find it in there, we could just type in TRM down here and then hit enter, enter, and we'd be good to go. All right, so what comes after thermal? Let me take a look here at my flight plan. Uh, let's see, where is... TNP, then DRK, and then direct to the airport. So TRP is 29 palms. Uh, not sure if we actually need to fly that one. We're actually going to fly to Drake instead. So I'm just going to type in DRK here. And it's direct. We're not flying uh, an airway or anything like that. So thermal to Drake, hit enter. It's going to ask if, ask us if that's the one we want. Drake Prescott 114.10. That is the one I want. So enter. We're going to go there, and then, uh, let's see, I think that's it, right? From there, it's direct to KPRC. So we can type in KPRC, enter, and enter one more time, and our flight plan is complete. Now, we haven't put in our arrival yet. There is no, uh, There are no stars for Prescott Airport, but there are some instrument approach procedures, so we may be using one of those. I haven't made a final decision on that yet. But when we do, if we do, I will show you how to put that in here as well. So that gets our flight plan set up. What else we need here? Let's go to the performance page now. You can see there's no information in here, right? So let's start by entering our fuel. And let's see, our zero fuel weight. Remember, we get that off of the control panel. Here, I'll show that to you real quick. There's the control panel, zero fuel weight or zero fuel mass, 24789. So that's what we're going to type in there. So select this right here. There we go, 24789. Enter. That gives us our zero fuel weight. Then we need our total fuel on board. We can just go right up here. We can add it up. 860 and 880 is what? That's 16, uh, 1740. So we can select this one here. 1740. Doesn't seem like it's enough fuel, does it? 1740 gives us our gross weight there. We can put in our total reserves if we want. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, let's see what's next. We're not going to get any information off this page at the moment. That's okay. This is all information. That's what it is. We're good there. Engine 1 and 2 fail. That makes sense because they're turned off right now. So we are good to go on that. And let me just look at my list here and make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, da, da, da. Always got to check the list, right? Now, I'm not using a, a checklist at the moment, per se. I'm just using the manual here that's telling me... Uh, whether or not I've missed anything, and I don't think I have. So it's going to roll us right into our before start checklist. And so, what's dinging? I don't like when things ding. And let's hop up top here and take a look real quick. No idea what's dinging. Not a problem. All right. So uh, before we can actually start the aircraft, of course, we need to push it back. So let's go ahead and take care of the pushback real quick. Pull up the GSX here. Uh, yeah, we want to use Alaska Airlines. That makes sense, doesn't it? Nose right, tail left. That's what we need. We won't start before pushback. And while they're doing their thing, let's go ahead and get started with our before start checklist. External power APU is on and checked. Circuit breakers. Those have all been checked on both sides. Remember, in the Pro Edition, the circuit breakers are simulated. So when you come over here... If you see any little white lines, and I'll just pop one of these up so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Little pop up here. So if the circuit breaker was off, let me make sure I do one. That's not going to be an issue. You see the little white line there. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, close that back down. You can take a look at your circuit breakers both sides. I've already done it. Make sure everything's uh, as it should be. All right, nose steering needs to be off. That's down here. Nose steering, and it is off. Flight guidance control panel is set. We've gone ahead and set our altitude already. Flight level 250. Uh, let's see. We've got 3003. Is that what we got? 3025. So let's, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Barometric pressure, 3025. Come on up. That's where we need to be. Release parking brakes real quick. Commencing push. All engines clear. All right, there's our A cars notification. We're going to go on that. Uh, let's see what else. Fuel quantity, we've checked that. I'm not going to do the hydraulic number three pressure check. It takes a little time. If you guys want to see it, please leave it down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to do it for you. Emergency brake pressure. 
Uh, let's see. Emergency brake. It says park and check. Okay, well, obviously we'll put it back in park once we get pushed back here. Uh, but we can check the pressure over here. This is all our pressures right here. Uh, where's emergency brake pressure? There we go. Parking brake. Plenty of pressure in that, so we're good. Hello, everyone. Emergency lights are armed, I do believe. But let's go ahead and take a look anyway. Uh, come on, Brain. Um, Tell me where the emergency yeah, lights are. All right, pilot, I suppose. Exterior. There they are. Emergency lights off. Now on. they're armed. Good. Um, but What's next? Power levers need to be in disconnect. They are. Nuts. Condition levers um, need to be in oh, fuel off. They are. I don't know why. Why did it say the flaps is don't all the way down? Worry about it. It's okay. uh, fasten seatbelt switch is on, oh. and departure briefing will so be completed as we taxi we out. So that is our before stuff. start checklist. So, first thing so let's go take care of our engine start flows real quick. Doors, okay, we so need to check to make sure they're closed. Um, not too complex. Brake set. We want to check to make sure the doors are closed. We can go right down here. We can flip this over one to the right, see how that puts it on systems, this and then we can click on doors. All the doors are green, which means they're all closed. It's supposed Make sure to do we that. flip that back to nav right away. Battery master, main auxiliary, and standby dash. are all uh, on. Beacon it, needs to come on at this point. Yeah, yeah. And it we'll is that this one right here. We need to off. flip it to red. Right click, and it goes to red. APU bleed air is supposed to be off, which it is. It would be green if it was on. And we're ready for engine number two. A little more cough in there, just for you. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Technically, we should wait for him to give us the clear, but we're going to go ahead and start the engine. So starting the engine is on the very plane. simple. The checklist goes as such. Make sure battery master, main auxiliary, standby are all on. So I want and to make on. sure no. doors are closed, fueling lights are right. off, so beacon light is on, nice. AP bleed is off. Make sure now the engine's clear. And then to start the engine, Perfect. hop that over here to this one. Exit. Starting the engine is pretty simple. We need to make sure that the uh, ignition stuck. switch is on normal, uh, when and then we're going to start with number two, so we right click this switch, up. and then there we left go. click this switch, we call it and there she goes, she's spinning up. Now this is very important. And as soon as we, we see some indication on the end one, we'll move the fuel this. lever, fuel and condition lever, door, to start and feather, just like that. There we go, start and feather. And I'm going to have to remember to try and talk a little bit louder, because these engines do get quite loud on here. way the arrow is pointing. So if the air was pointing down, you grab the handle and push it down. If it's pointing up. We heard the, the little switch click up, off. That the means door. the start sequence is complete right, for it's that it's engine. And we can pretty, go ahead and start engine complex, number one. Right, Usually you kind of want to let it stabilize a little bit. We're pretty good to go on that. So let's go right into engine really really number not. one. Left click this switch right. and then left click this switch. Now. And same thing, as soon as we get some N1 the indication on here, door, we can move the fuel and condition lever up to and start the feather. There we go. We and it doesn't give a specific cool. number, it just says as soon as but you see any indication on there. So we're good on that. Let die, that finish starting itself up. There's a, okay. And the captain's after start flows. Oh. Once that is done, right. once the engine stabilizes a little, so we'll move now. our... Now we'll uh, condition levers masses. to maximum 1020, so that's when it's going to really get loud in here. We want to go ahead and make sure the APU is off, so we should do that right now. And it says to let the gen the cool down for about a minute before face. actually turning the Over. APU off. So I'm going to let it cool for, not quite a minute, but I'm just going to let it cool while I go to the next item. Main bus tie needs to be off, that's this one here. It is now off. Ice protection as required. We're going to be using level 1 ice and protection for now. Because we're not worried about icing conditions. So that's the pedo static all on. Go to the next page here. Rudder travel. We want to check the rudder travel. So we'll check that and then we'll take care of the... Um, come on, brain work. Oh, turning the APU all the way off. So just move my chair a little bit here. Rudder travel. Full left. Full right. Neutral rudder travel is... Alright, back up top we can turn the APU off now. Just hit the power button and we're good. MFD is already right. set to nav. Transponder and TCAS as required. Uh, TCAS is on standby at the moment. Or actually it's not on standby. Let me show you how to do that. Jump up here real quick. Put it on standby. Click the bottom right line select key. Click the EXP or expanded option. And then you're going to hold this key down until you see this move to TARA. There we go, and then click the this twice to put it back in standby. And now and I can just click sure this to rotate it up to TARA, like and we're good to go. Flap set for takeoff. We're going to be doing a flap 5 departure today. 
There's flaps 5 right there. And there's an indicator here as well. Flap 5, 10, 15, and then 35. Auto feather needs to be selected on. There it is. Engine rating needs to be in top 90%. We'll get that once we move these all the way up. Okay, in top 90%. There we go. If it, if it isn't at in top 90%, you can click on the in top button here. Uh, that should actually put it at full if it's not at 90. So it says for the first takeoff today to do it at 90%. And you can hear those engines spinning up now. I do love the sound of them. The only thing I dislike is I have to talk really loud to make sure that you can hear me because for whatever reason this microphone doesn't seem to pick up quite as well as I think it should. But enough about that. Tank auxiliary pumps both need to go on. One and two. Standby and PTU pumps need to go on. That's these two here. The hydraulic number three and elevator check. Again, we're not doing all that. The hydraulic number three system on here right now because it takes a little while. Bleed air as required. Both bleeds need to be on and the flow selector needs to be to normal. That's up here. Okay, these are the bleeds. They're off right now. They need to come on and go to normal. I made the mistake of skipping this accidentally uh, in a flight I did, I don't know, last week or something like that. And once you get to a certain altitude, you start getting a warning for cabin pressure because the pressurization in the cabin isn't working right. So you need to make sure those bleeds are on. Uh, the ice pressure check, we're good on that. Uh, what else? Okay, this is a no Top down over here. Uh, in the past, uh, people that have messed with the smoke detectors and There's the de-ice pressure check right there. Okay, in case you're wondering. We're good there. It says on here, 18 plus or minus 3 is normal. So there you go, 18 and 18. So we're good on that. So let's go through the after start checklist. External power and APU is off. Main bus tie is off. Ice protection is checked. And we're set to level 1. Rudder travel is good. Uh, rudder actuator test. I, I don't actually know which one this is. Rudder actuator test. Uh, somehow I keep managing them. Well, I, I just haven't figured out what it is. So if you know what the rudder actuator test is, please let me know. Nose steering needs to be on at this point. Need to hop up over here for that. That's nose steering right there. It is now on. Auto feather has been selected. Engine rating is at 90% as required. Batteries have been checked. Flaps are set to 5. Auxiliary standby and PTU pumps are on. Uh, again, hydraulic number 3 elevator has not been checked. Caution and warning lights. This is a dark cockpit concept. So we should have no, nothing other than green and a white up here. And then no lights on here. Now that's the parking brake there, so I'm not worried about that one. Flight instruments and radios are set, altimeters are set, and cross-checked, which means we are ready for the joy of taxiing out. Uh, it does, it's not on the list, but we should turn the taxi light on before we taxi out. And that's that, so let's go ahead and uh, taxi this aircraft out. Alright, basic and quick taxi brief. We're actually going the opposite direction. Uh, that we've been going here at LAX for quite some time so still over here Terminal 6 only we're gonna be backing it out and pointing our nose up this way this time looks like we're gonna take Charlie down here we might as well just take Charlie all the way down here to Charlie 1 hang a left and uh, this is a pretty long runway we got a pretty light aircraft so we'll use uh, the Foxtrot is that Foxtrot? Yeah, we'll use the Foxtrot intersection for uh, our, excuse me had a little uh, up there. We'll use the Foxtrot intersection for our departure today. Uh, and that's it. Let's do it. Alright, we're finally going to be taking a different departure out of LA. We've been taking a Gorman 4 departure for the last, gosh, I don't know how many flights out of here, but it's not going to matter this time because we're going to be taking the Holtz 9 RNAV departure. Now, based on the winds, <coughs> there's your cough. you got to get at least one in your face every video. Uh, let's see here. What was I talking about? Uh, the winds today, uh, what, right now it's 3405, so basically we're going to be taking either runways 24 or 25, our choice. We're going to go with 25 because, hey, I want to go with 25 and it's closer to us, less taxi time. So that's going to be these guys on this side here, runway 25 left. And for our initial climb out, we got to jump over here. It even tells you initial climb out, see inset. Anytime you see these dotted lines here, that means there's an inset somewhere, all right? So, and it shouldn't be hard to find the inset either. It's not like this thing is the size of freaking Montana. It's a little piece of paper. Okay, so we're going to be <laughs> taking runway 25 right over here. Initial climb out is basically runway heading 249. 
uh, until we get out here to Docker. And it can be a little tight seeing those in there. You've got Hipper. Why doesn't it surprise me? It's California. They got hippies there, right? Now, don't get offended if you're from California. I'm not saying you're a hippie. I'm just saying they got hippies in California. Okay. Anyway, Hipper is uh, looks like it's for 25 left. And Docker, based on the line, is kind of hard to see, but you can see the little line drawn just above my cursor there. All right. That's Docker. This one's Hipper. So we're looking for Docker at or above 3,000 feet. That's, that's within two miles. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh... Let me just make sure. It doesn't say you have to be a jet aircraft. I was just checking because that's that's going to be a pretty quick climb there. I think we can make it, but we're going to have to climb quick. Yeah, so let's just keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, once we get to Docker, we're going to bang a left to 218 degrees down to Wheeler. Not a Dore. That's still for uh, runway 25 left. Uh, Wheeler at or above 5,000. Again, another two miles. So this is a quick climb out here. We're going to be climbing pretty steep. And then from uh, Wheeler down to Shafe, and that'll bring us outside of this little box over here to Shafe. Bang a left 153 degrees down to PV, another left to 95, down to Holtz, then another left to 77. And we could go to Thermal. Uh, I'm going to have to take a, take a look at the flight plan, but I think Thermal's already on there. So to Thermal and then on from there. So everything looks pretty good. I've actually flown into Thermal in the real world. Uh, it's below sea level. Yeah, did you know that? It's below sea level. Good times. Anyway, uh, that's our departure for today. Anything key, the, the key things here are going to be these uh, altitude restrictions. At or above 3,000, at or above 5,000. That's a pretty quick climb out, so we're going to have to make sure that we're climbing uh, as necessary. Nice and steep. Get her up there nice and quick, and then let's get out of LA's airspace as quick as we can. What do you say? All right, let's do this. All right, let's go through these before takeoff flows real quick. The trims have been checked. We need to test the takeoff warning system. And in order to do that, we gotta make sure the control lock is off and the parking brake is off. Those are both done. Hop up over here real quick and we shouldn't hear any sound. Excellent, that means we're good to go on that. So, let me just reset the parking brake here. Control lock can actually stay on. There we go. We're good on that. Okay, what's next? Uh, flight taxi switch needs to go to flight mode. If we did that before doing the takeoff warning test, then we would get an a little alarm. Anti-collision light switch needs to go on white strobes. There we go. We should have that logo light on. I should turn that on earlier. Uh, flight attendant notifications have been made. Transponder and TCAS needs to go on altitude. And to do that, all we have to do now is hit this guy, T-A-R-A, and we're good to go on that. Uh, control lock has already been released. Flight controls, check. Uh, yeah. Oh, I remember why. Turn, it, turn this back to taxi. Now we can do flight controls. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Full up. Full down. Neutral. And we've already tested the... Uh, uh, rudder travel. All right, make sure we turn this back to the flight mode there real quick. We're good on that. Condition levers are in max. That's where they're supposed to be. Terrain and radar display as required. We got, uh, we should have terrain on this side. That's what I want anyway. There's terrain and then weather on this side. And we're good on that. Fuel confirmed required on board. It is. So that leaves us the before takeoff checklist. Flight attendant notifications are complete. Takeoff briefing is complete. Condition levers are in max. Trims are set. Takeoff warning has been tested. Flight controls are free and correct. Flight taxi switches in flight mode. Radar terrain as required. Transponder and TCAS on altitude. Bleeds are minimum and as required. Uh, external lights are on except for landing lights. Let's turn those on now. There's the landing lights. Runway heading. Uh, we're going to put the heading in as soon as we pull on here. And the last thing I want to do before we pull out on the runway is I'm going to go up here and turn the dome light off. All right, that is the before takeoff checklist. Let's go ahead and pull out here. And once we get lined up on the runway, I want to try and remember to set the uh, heading to the uh, come on, brain work to the runway heading. I always forget to do that, even though it's on the checklist because we're not on the runway yet. Technically, uh, the before takeoff checklist takes place when you're not on the runway. Now, to our left here, there's an aircraft getting ready to pull onto the onto the runway. Uh, at the far end of 25 right and I'm hoping that he doesn't try to uh, 
go through us to take off. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. That's the uh, beautiful default uh, AI traffic for FSX. Good stuff, right? All right, let's get lined up here. Make sure we're pointed straight down the runway. There we go. Put the brakes on real quick, and let's set that heading to the runway heading. It's actually a little frustrating to me that I always forget this. All right, there we go. 249 degrees. Everything else is done. We are ready for takeoff. What do you say we go ahead and get this bird up in the air before that airplane behind us decides to try and do the same thing? She's going to pull to the left more and more as we zip on down here. Coming up on our rotate speed. There it is, rotate. Looking good. Positive rate of climb, gear up. Little uh, aileron trim in there. We're at our climb speed. There he goes, right over the top of us. Flaps can come up. Try and hold this heading for a minute here. A little more aileron trim. Just a skosh. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and get our autopilot set up. I have to do this so that I can do the checklist. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a disaster. So. Uh, let's see, we want, come on, brain work, let's go ahead and set uh, heading for now, autopilot on, it's going to hold pitch and it's going to hold the heading we want, and now we can set it to altitude select is armed, and we actually want, uh, these are a little hard to see in here, that's one thing I kind of dislike about this, uh, indicated airspeed is the one I want, and then we can bring that speed up, bring it up to 200 knots, 205 is fine, and now I want to put it in LNAV, which is the nav switch here. There we go. LNAV is set. Autopilot is set. We're doing good. I didn't crash the airplane. There's a bonus there. Technically, I think uh, the overhead lights should probably stay off until we get above 10,000, but so that we can all see what we're doing here, we're going to turn them on. There's the dome lights now. Let's take a look at our after takeoff climb flows. Flaps are at zero. We've taken care of that. We want to move our condition levers to 900. That's one click down. Uh, push MCL on the engine control panel. That's this one right here. MCL is now pushed. Auto feather needs to go off. That's this one down here. Auto feather is now off. Things are looking good so far. M top switch push if required. We don't need to push it. Auxiliary pump switch is off. That's uh, these two down here. And then the standby and PTU pumps can also come off. Uh, bleeds on and normal. You know, you know, it never told us to turn them off. Now it tells us to turn them on. But they are on and we are on normal. So we're good there. Taxi light can go off at this point. We're good on that. Uh, pressurization panel check. That's this right here. Making sure that uh, we're within basically this white arc here. Ice protection is set, Let's, and we'll want to keep an eye on our temperature here. If our temperature gets too low, and it's, it's pretty close, uh, we might add uh, go to level 2 on our ice protection. And also if we get an ice, uh, ice detected warning down here. So, uh, let's see what's next. Uh, landing gear, oh, this takes us right into the actual climb checklist. That was the flow. Alright, so landing gear is up, flaps are at zero, power is set, auto feather is off, auxiliary standby, PTU pumps are off. Engine temperatures and pressure, we want to keep an eye on those. That's these guys right here. That's a gimme. Uh, bleeds are on and normal. Cabin temps and pressure are checked. Ice protection as required. Uh, and we are level one now, and that's what we're going to stay with. So that takes us right into... Uh, what does that take us into? Oh, yeah, that takes us into the elevator music because we have nothing else to do. And I didn't do the little FS recorder for the taxi out. So you'll get climb music, uh, but you won't get taxi music. Good times, right? So here we go.
All right, what do you say we take care of this approach briefing here? Uh, we're going to fly the ILS today. They only have one there at uh, Love Field. We're going to go ahead and fly it. Since it's dark out, we're unfamiliar with the airport. Why not fly the ILS? That'll help us get in there nice and safe, especially when you consider the airport elevation is at 5,045 feet. There's mountains all around, plenty of terrain, so we want to make sure we're as safe as we can coming in there. Uh, so starting up from the top, obviously this is not a Lido chart. That is because there is no chart for uh, Prescott in uh, the Navigraph charts as of yet. So hopefully they'll add one eventually. But here we go. Uh, our uh, our frequency for our ILS today is 108.5. Our approach course is going to be 208 degrees. Our runway landing distance is 7,215 feet. Not a very long runway, but not too short either. There's, there's plenty there for this aircraft. Touchdown zone elevation is 4,976 feet. And airport elevation is 545 feet. Keep in mind, airport elevation is going to be somewhere near the center of the airport, so we may have a little bit of upslope. Of course, it's FSX, so in reality, nothing. Uh, there's, there's no slope at all. It's perfectly flat. All our other frequencies are ATIS for weather, Phoenix Approach Control, Prescott Tower, Ground Control, all that. Of course, we're still not using ATC, so guess what? We're not talking to anybody. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, we're coming in from Drake, and then from Drake it's straight to Craddy, which is uh, this waypoint right here, and Craddy's going to be right here on uh, the map view. All right, so <coughs> at Craddy we need to be at nine, at or above 9,000 feet. We're shooting for 9,000 feet at Craddy, and then we can be... I hate this thing keeps popping up. This is the, the new version of Adobe PDF, which looks great, and I've got all my other uh, charts and stuff up here, but... Um, it's, it's a pain every time I get down near here, that thing pops up. Anyway, uh, once we hit Craddy, we can start our descent. We need to be at or above 7,900 feet when we get to Humpty. Humpty? Humpty? I don't know. I guess that's what we'll call it. Humpty. Uh, and then from there down to Swiggins. <laughs> it's at or above 6,440 feet. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's talk about our missed approach procedures. If we have to perform a missed approach, we're going to climb to 5,400 feet. And once we hit 5,400 feet, it is a climbing right turn direct to Drake VOR. And then, uh, let's see, from Drake VOR, we're going to take the outbound 305 degree radial up to 9,000 feet. And then a right turn direct back to Drake VOR and then hold there. So basically, uh, we'll climb up until we hit 5,400 feet. That's to make sure that we're going to clear these obstacles here without any issues. As soon as we hit 5,400 feet, we begin a right turn direct to the Drake VOR here. Once we hit Drake VOR, we're going to go outbound on the 305 degree radial, continuing our climb until we hit 9,000 feet. Once we hit 9,000 feet, we make a right turn back direct to Drake VOR and then enter a left hand holding pattern, standard one minute. Uh, increments. Yeah. Alright, what else we got here? Uh, critical information. Uh, da, 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 the approach is 3 degrees. Typical. It does not say whether or not it's got Pappy or... I think it's Pappy lights. I think that's what the P means on this guy here. So we should have Pappy lights on the left-hand side of the runway. And our minimums are 200 feet AGL or 5,176 and a half feet, I guess. Uh, MSL, so we should be good there. Uh, the weather looks pretty clear in there. There's not a lot of clouds or anything like that, so we should have good visibility of the runway, and we should be rocking and rolling, ready to go. So, any questions about the approach? Of course not. It's a video. You guys are still falling for that joke, aren't you? All right, let's go. All right, ladies and germs, we're coming up on top of descent here pretty quick, so we want to go ahead and make sure we take care of the descent checklist. And uh, let me just show you how we set it up real quick. I've shown this before. We'll do it again anyway. Hop on down here to your FMS. You want to make sure that whatever waypoint you're shooting for a target altitude at, in our case, it's craddy. We want to be at or above 9,000 feet. Make sure that the uh, altitude restriction is placed next to the waypoint. You can do that by clicking on it and typing it in. Easy enough. We're not going to put anything in that one. Once you've done that, click on the VNAV function. Click on the 2 button and then you'll select that waypoint 
hit enter a few times you'll set up uh, here we'll go ahead and set it up real quick anyway so we want craddy is number two select that enter we don't need to put anything there nine thousand feet is what we want eighteen hundred minus eighteen hundred feet per minute hit enter again and it tells us how far and how long until we get to top of descent so once we've taken care of that we can come up here and get the rest of this set up real quick we're going to change our altitude down to nine thousand feet that's a little too low there we go nine thousand feet now in order to arm the VNAV function you must be within a certain distance or time right now it says two minutes so it should work when we click on VNAV see how it shows VNAV over here in white that means it's armed once we hit that top of descent point it'll automatically start to descend if you're too far out it won't start the it, it won't even let you arm the VNAV so if we were to say five minutes out still it won't let you arm the VNAV some little quirk about uh, the Majestic Dash 8Q400 alright so that's done uh, based on uh, the approach that I showed you from Drake Drake is really close there so we're actually gonna hang left we're not gonna go straight to Craddy so we'll hang left I've already gone ahead and set the heading uh, using the heading bug here to 34 degrees so we'll be uh, going just a little further left of course to make sure that we can swing or swing back around to Craddy okay let's take care of this checklist real quick altimeters set and cross checked we can't do that until we get below 18,000 so we're gonna leave those for now fuel balance is checked We've got 330 aside. I balanced it out a little while ago. I've shown that to you before. If you need to see it again, let me know in the comments. Pressurization is set. We want to make sure that the altitude is set as close as we can to the landing altitude, which it is in this case a little over 5,000 feet. Cabin announcements are good. Fasten seatbelt switch is on. And the approach briefing is complete. So the only thing left to do, which, uh, well, we set the MCP altitude, so we're good on that. So there's nothing left to do at this point except wait until we run out of... Uh, space here and hit our top of descent. Kind of sounds weird to say it like that, running out of space. Now uh, we'll be taking care of the in-range checklist in a little bit. We'll do that once we get a little bit closer. Actually, we're pretty close to it right now. Let's go ahead and uh, what do we got? One minute till descent. Let's do this in-range checklist. Ground proxi proximity warning sensors landing flaps selected. We're going to be doing a full flaps landing today. Fuel transfer is off. That's this one right here. Hydraulic pressure and quantity needs to be checked. Plenty of pressure plenty of quantity we're good on those caution and warning lights checked let's hop up top here it's a little bit easier no caution no warning lights we're good on those what else external lights need to be on uh, I'm gonna turn the landing lights on a little early uh, we're gonna get a warning in our pie rep not really concerned about that um, I'm gonna turn them on once we go below um, uh, let's see once we go below 15,000 feet, I'll turn the landing lights on. Ice protection is set. We haven't got any icing warnings. We're still on level one, even though the temperature is quite low. We haven't had any any issues with icing. Flight attendant notifications are complete. And that, ladies and germs, is your in-range checklist. So the only thing we'll have to do next, as I'm flipping through here, is our before landing flows, which will come up here shortly. We're just about to descend. You see that little thing there? Bam, VNAV path is now active. Let's pull those throttles back because we don't want to gain way too much speed. You can see the speed's going up right now. So we want to pull these throttles back. We want to keep that speed from climbing too high. There we go. Looking pretty good there. Maybe just a little bit lower. It's like about 15 on the torque is going to work pretty well. Okay. Uh, before landing flows will be here in a little bit. Then we'll take care of the before landing checklist, after landing checklist, all the good stuff. This is going to be a good time. Let's go ahead and get this bird on into KPRC. We'll see you. Um, yeah, we'll see you once we're on the approach. All right, so we're a little past Craddy, just about on top of Humpty. We've intercepted the localizer and the glide slope. Uh, we've got our gear out. We got our flaps out. Everything's looking good. Before landing flow has been taken care of, so let's go ahead and roll right into. Boy, we're gonna be descending quick here, huh? kind of overshot that glide slope a little didn't it see how steep that's going right now all right let's take care of this before landing checklist landing gear is down and three green condition levers need to go to max it's gonna get a little louder in here uh, you know what I did forget one thing let's hop up here we need bleeds to minimum there we go bleeds are on minimum now and down just a little bit looking good there we uh, need to bring that throttle back some more because we are descending quickly right now. You can see the airport ahead of us there. Uh, let's see what else. Condition levers are on max. Auxiliary standby. PTU pumps all need to be on. Haven't done that yet. 
uh, standby, PTU, all on. Flight attendant notifications are done. Flaps are set. And that is it. That is the before landing checklist. So uh, you can see here, I did this a little earlier using the chart provided. I put in my approach, um, uh, my reference speed, and my, uh, my approach speed. So 114 is our landing speed, uh, or VREF, and then our approach speed is VREF plus 5. And that's 119. 2500. So that's just about where we're at right now. There it is right there. Let's try not to drop below it bring us back up here where we can see a little and now we're gonna let it fly the ILS for a minute and I will take the autopilot off here soon but it's dark out I cannot see anything I mean it is you can see it is pitch black there's nothing out here Prescott's a small town the airport's just a skosh outside of town we're gonna speed back just a notch so we're gonna let it fly this ILS for a couple minutes uh, I don't mind hand flying uh, I've done it plenty. You guys have seen that. I just want to uh, make sure that we have a good clean approach here because I don't want to. I don't want to have a disaster on my hands. So I'm going to go ahead and let it continue flying. I need to get that speed to come back down just a little bit. We're at 122, and I'm just kind of keeping an eye over here on my torque. This is what I'm watching right here as I mess with my throttles and just just playing with the throttles. See, we're coming back down now bring that just a tiny bit of torque back in they're they're a little uneven that's not unusual it's a little glitch with the controllers mine always do that doesn't matter what I do I have registered version of FSU IPC it doesn't make any difference <coughs> there's an extra cough in your face make your day uh, there's 119 bring those back up just a bit yeah see like the right one's moving the left one's not I don't, I don't understand yet. Uh, come on Let's try and keep them together here now. There we go. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Uh, and all we can really do is fly it in. You get those beautiful Rex textures, which make the airport quite visible. We were correct. There's Pappy lights on the left side of the runway. It's not a very long runway, but it's not that short either, so not too concerned about it. We did drop just a skosh below our approach speed there. So uh, just get it to come back up nice and easy. Let's go ahead and take that autopilot off now, and it's going to try and go to the left. Watch. There it is. It goes down a little bit. Just a little trim. A little trim. I don't know why when you take the autopilot off, it always comes out of trim immediately. That's kind of weird to me, but it is what it is. So we'll just hand fly her on down in there. It always feels a little... Um, kind of squishy to me. That's, that's probably the best word for it, squishy. But see, now we're drifting way to the left here. And I have no idea why. Speed's looking pretty good. We keep drifting left. Looks like our wind shifted on us, which kind of stinks. We now have a bit of a tailwind, which is going to make this landing just a bit harder. Pull that power back just a little. There we go. Now we try not to mess with the trim too much at this point. We just want to fly it in tiny bit fast. Not too bad, though. We do have our landing lights on. I brought them on when we came below uh, 15,000 feet, as I said. Let's listen to our call-outs, and let's land this thing. Minimums. Smooth one. Minimums. There's that little glitch right there. 100. That was terrible. <laughs> you see, it just kind of dropped out at the bottom there, didn't it? Wow. Well, you can't get them all perfect. It was still under 200 feet per minute. It was, I think, 168 is what I think I saw. So it wasn't horrid, probably because we had a little tailwind. That's why it dropped out. It probably should have maintained just a little bit more speed. Uh, but it is what it is. still was a tolerable landing there. I've certainly had worse.
All right, let's go ahead and take care of these after landing flows and checklist lights as required. We can turn the landing lights off now. Where are you at? Landing lights off, taxi lights on. Well, you can't see these at all. Huh? Let's get that dome light on in here. There we go. Now we can see what we're doing. Uh, let's see. Flight taxi switch needs to go to the taxi mode. There it is in the taxi mode. Turn that off. <coughs> Uh, let's see, MFDs are good, transponder, standby. There it goes. Flaps are up, control lock engage. I'm going through the floor right now, not the checklist. We'll do the checklist here in just a second. The all damper can come off. Leads as required, back to normal. More max for passenger comfort. Normal works well for for me, tie the main bus all the way up here. Main bus tied. Ice protection all off. We never needed the ice protection except the pitot static. That's a given every time. APU as required. We'll go ahead and push the power button. Let it go through its check. Okay, after landing checklist. Radar is off. Transponders as required. Flaps are at zero. Control lock is on. Auxiliary pumps need to come off. Those weren't part of the flow, actually. So auxiliary and PTU pumps can all come off off. There we go. Yaw damper is off. Light and taxi switches in the taxi mode. Lights are as required. Main bus tie is tied. Ice protection as required. APU as required. We can hit the start button now. Let the APU fire itself up. I'm going to go ahead and taxi this aircraft in just like I always do. And I will see you just in time to shut her down. All right, the parking flow has been taken care of. Try as I might, I could not actually find a gate to park this aircraft at, so when we do end A cars here in a minute, we're going to get a warning that says we're not parked at a gate. That's all right. We'll just acknowledge that and move on. But let's take care of the parking checklist real quick. External lights off. We don't have them all off yet. Uh, let's see. Off. We can turn the gen on, so we can leave logo lights on. Red on the beacon lights. Wing, wing inspection, we're already off. Okay, we're good on that. Uh, let's see. Parking brake is set. Seatbelt sign is off. Nose steering is off. Standby and PTU pumps are off. Power levers are on. Disconnect. External power or APU is on. We're on the APU, which means we can take the condition levers to the fuel off position now. That's going to shut down the engines for us. Transponder is... It's not even on standby. I turned it off. Bleeds are minimum and off. That's up here, so this knob to minimum, these two in the off position. Emergency lights can go off at this point. Emergency lights off. Ice protection is already all off. Standby auxiliary main and battery master as required. All of those are going to remain on for the moment because we have the APU on. So, hop outside our aircraft. You can see we're just kind of parked out here in the middle of nowhere. All of the parking spaces are for these small aircraft. Uh, we are not by the terminal, actually. I've been up to Prescott. The terminal's in a different location. There weren't any gates over there, so I don't really know what the deal is with that, but it doesn't really matter. That's going to wrap it up for this flight, ladies and germs. Of course, we're going to hop on over and take a look at the website real quick just to see where we're at, maybe see where we're headed next, just see how many hours we got left. But uh, let's see, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I like to say that at the end of every video, and it must be working because we're up to 421 as of today. And it is, what, two days after Christmas here? I'm recording these videos uh, uh, for later release. So it's two days after Christmas. This one won't be released for a couple of weeks. But I'm hoping that by the end of this year, 2015, we will be at 500 subscribers. And I'm still waiting for something from somebody on, hey, uh, here's what we should do as a celebration for 500 subscribers. So if you got any suggestions, please go ahead and leave them in the comments down there. Uh, we're not going to do it the minute we hit 500 subscribers, but we're going to do it somewhere in that general vicinity. So that's it. That's all. Give a thumbs up down below. Leave something in the comments if you want to. And let's hop on over to the website real quick, wrap this flight up, and call it good. Oh, almost forgot. I almost always forget this. You guys are supposed to remind me. Need to take care of our A cars. Flight was scheduled for 1 hour 35. It took us 146 at this point. Not too shabby. And the flight, yep, not parked at a gate. I still wish to continue. We're good there. That means it'll probably have to be manually approved. It's not that big of a deal. Landing vertical speed was, I was close. It was minus 160. It's under 200. Certainly not our best landing, but uh, not our worst either. And I know what happened with that. I'm telling you, it's that we picked up a tailwind. 
The wind shifted on us right bef right when we were starting on approach. I watched it do it. Um, it was probably just before I, I uh, unpaused the video to show you guys where we were. So when you have a little tailwind like that, you need you need to keep that in mind. Maybe make your approach speed just a little bit higher. Not much. We're talking a couple of knots here because, remember, your ground speed is now faster with a tailwind. And when you're landing on a short runway, you want to be careful about that. But anyway, uh, so it was a little bit bumpy on the landing, but not too bad. Let's file this pie rep real quick before I run my mouth any longer. That's done. Close that out. Yes, we want to exit. And we're done here. Let's go over to the website now and actually see where we're at. All right, quick look at the website, ladies and germs. You can see we're still at 49 hours to go to our next rank. Uh, it's going to be a long haul. That's just the way it is, but uh, eventually we'll get there up to captain. Let's take a quick look at our flight. If it wants to load, of course it wants to be slow the minute. I've already looked at it once, and then I hop on here to record it for you guys, and it sits there and spins and spins and spins. That's actually pretty obnoxious, don't you think? Come on now. Come on. Oh, my goodness. I might have to pause the video here. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. So literally, the second I paused the video, it, it came up. <laughs> <laughs> figures uh, no surprise approval pending I think it's probably because um, of the uh, not being at a gate so uh, it's 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 gonna give you a, it's gonna give a little warning to uh, the hub managers gonna say check gate they're gonna look on there they're gonna see that we're at the airport so we're good to go they'll approve it and it won't be a problem a little rough on the landing rate but good profit percentage 62.41 percent I like that uh, everything else is your basic information departure and arrival we've been through this before I guarantee that warning is from having the landing lights on above 10,000 feet uh, because the way a cars works it uses MSL uh, because it doesn't calculate AGL so rather than saying oh yeah you're 10,000 above the ground so you're good it just says you're either at or above 10,000 MSL but because the airport was 5,000 feet uh, MSL I turned the landing lights on when we were 10,000 feet AGL. If you're confused by all of that, go ahead and let me know down in the comments and I'll explain what I mean by everything. But that is it. That is all. No more. As always, ladies and germs, keep the blue side up unless you're crossing the Pacific, at which time you're going to have to figure out on your own which blue side goes up. See you all later. Yeah.